What was it like being a surgeon during the peak of the pandemic? It's something I've been asked a few times and now more than ever in arguably what is the greatest global healthcare crisis of our generation is the perfect opportunity to think about. Hospitals around the world have had to throw away the handbook and quickly rewrite their critical incident plans that are typically address 21st century threats of massive industrial or commercial transport accidents, terrorism related violence and natural disasters rather than forgotten and unimaginable pandemics of previous century. And the leading stars of this horror movie we find ourselves in are now the frontline emergency physicians, the intensivists, the respiratory doctors. These are the doctors who will care for and cure the people afflicted by this cruel pathogen. But let's not forget the epidemiologists, the virologists, the immunologists, who are no longer the unsung heroes that we never knew we needed, but have been uncomfortably thrust into media limelight. These are the experts that will lead us safely through this healthcare catastrophe. And actually looking around my own hospital, I saw exactly that. The emergency room staff on the front line geared up to deal with the swathes of potential COVID patients. The intensive care teams ready to fight in their PPE, a modern day coat of armor. And the respiratory doctors leading their cavalry of medical physicians to the charge against the virus. Even the often overlooked and in my opinion, undervalued geriatricians continue to provide their endless and much needed empathy and incredible versatility in managing acute COVID wards. And finally, we get to the surgeons, the lost tribe. Surgical staff across the world were either redeployed to other more urgent areas or left to manage an ever dwindling surgical caseload. Yes, there were still emergency operations to do and sick surgical patients to see, but most of the surgical arenas we used to demonstrate our skills and flex our talents as well as our faithful wingmen, the anaesthetists and the anaesthetic staff, they were all taken away for more important causes as non-urgent surgeries grinded to a halt. Surgeons are a rare type of beast. They're used to being the centre of attention, being productive. Instead, most of us were left contemplating our purpose at a time of a brand new medical emergency. Surgeons in the back seat, now that is unprecedented. Surgeons by nature are addicted to being decisive, keeping up with busy operating lists and busy clinics, and the actual art and craft of surgery itself. Going from that to cold turkey, that was a challenge. There was a sudden loss of purpose, a transition from being a useful and valued member of the team to being impotent. Myself and my surgical colleagues trying to demonstrate value anywhere we could, eagerly taking the emergency calls, rushing for an urgent surgical review from another specialty, and hastily involving ourselves with any and every urgent operation we could find. Never has a removal of a foreign body from a rectum seemed as appealing. Well, jokes aside from the surgical team being placed on furlough, it was a time to retreat to neglected paperwork and administration. The era of COVID-19 has brought lots of frustration, doom, gloom, and tragedy in equal measure, but it's also ushered in some new ways of working, which may continue to be a feature long after the pandemic has gone. We have evolved and found new ways to focus on patient care, increase efficiency, and importantly, be humble and grateful.